Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Verena Ras, and I am really excited to be able to tell you all a little bit more about how our team have started to implement some more advanced bioinformatics training across Africa using one of our multiple delivery approach uh, training models that we've been using to deliver our flagship introduction to bioinformatics course for the last five years. Now, during this talk, I will just do a quick outline of HAA Bionet's popular multiple delivery mode training model approach, which has been used for quite a number of years to deliver our flagship introduction to bioinformatics course, as I said earlier. I will also tell you a little bit more about how we developed our 16S RRNA microbiome intermediate bioinformatics course. And I'll cover some points around the development of the infrastructure very briefly, the modified training model that we used, and insights from running some of, um, well, from running the first iteration in 2019. And I'll touch on some of our key successes from the model. So let's first start with the multiple delivery mode training model um, that we've been using to deliver IBT. So the model was developed by the H3A Bionet Training Working Group specifically to overcome some of the challenges African institutions often face. And in the context of the development of this course, the issues they were trying to overcome were things like power failures, intermittent internet connectivity, um, lack of local infrastructure and compute facilities. So the model combined distance learning, face-to-face -face learning and online learning components in order to reach a rather large number of participants across various hosting sites. So the model worked in summary as follows. Classrooms would typically apply to host the course. Um, and would need to then meet a set of basic criteria. Um, the criteria for this course were very, very basic. So these were things like access to a training facility, uh, internet access, and things like that. And once accepted as a host, the host was then required to find suitable local teaching assistants and a local systems administrator who would then be available throughout the course for on-site support. The key point to note here is that IBT is free of charge and so everything needed to be done voluntarily. But once this was all in place, participants were then recruited via a formal application and selection process. And then once these participants were selected, they were then required to attend bi-weekly contact sessions within their local classrooms where they would watch pre-recorded lecture videos um, of the module trainers, which were typically experts situated in other countries all across Africa. They would also then be prompted to complete some practical assignments. And here, the local staff would then be readily available to assist should any issues arise, uh, especially during the practical assignment component of the, of the session. Then, at the end of the session, Classrooms then joined a virtual live session, which last year was facilitated using Adobe Connect. And during the session, they would have the opportunity to interact live with the module trainer, but also with other classrooms and other classroom participants and trainers. I also just wanted to quickly highlight that all staff and participants were also managed via a um, online learning management system. We used a system called Vula, which was available freely to us as the core team. And tests, practicals, assignments, lecture notes were also made available via um, this learning management system. Now, because this was an introductory course, it did mean that we could rely quite heavily on online tools and resources, keeping the infrastructural requirements for the hosting classrooms at a minimum. But now, IBT is in its fifth year, and we now reach more than 1,000 participants annually, now across approximately 40 classrooms. And with a number of 
uh, bioinformatics studies being taken now on the African continent growing quite exponentially, along with some of the local capacity, um, HA Bionet, especially from our own network, then expressed quite a need for more advanced training using some of these flexible models. But the key question here then became, could we offer such advanced a training using the same model and how well would it transition to, to more advanced topics? Well, perhaps I particularly was a little bit naive when I joined uh, the group, uh, but most of us went well challenge accepted. Let's just try and do it. Let's run a pilot round, uh, put it out there and see how well it works and let's see what feedback we get. And maybe with the next round, we could actually get it to run quite well. But of course, everything often comes second to your choice of topic. Um, and after some careful consideration and dialogues within our own network, we then came to the conclusion that 16S or RNA analysis would be a good topic to deliver. Um, in part because more and more microbiome studies are actually being conducted uh, by African-based research groups generating data. And because of that, there is an increasing demand for knowledge in the design and analysis of microbiome studies and data. And also because we already had access to a number of experts within um, HA Bionet, so the trainers were available and we didn't have to go and search for, for topic experts and trainers. So once we had our experts on board, and I've put them here on this slide, uh, to assist with the content development, we could then proceed to actually start to develop the course modules. So these trainers then proceeded to identify some key topics, which ranged from uh, designing microbiome studies to more practical bioinformatics topics, such as introductory high-performance computing, or various microbiome analysis pipelines, as well as downstream analyses um, was highlighted as well. For each of these key topics that were identified and through an iterative process, we also performed detailed competency mapping. So course um, and module topics were actually mapped against the International Society for Computational Biology's core bioinformatics competencies, and then further mapped to knowledge skills and areas, resulting in the development of six core modules. I have just listed some of these modules. Um, well, I've listed all of these modules here on this slide. So once modules were developed, the focus then, of course, shifted to infrastructure and how we could actually have multiple classrooms run these fairly complicated analyses and also do that at the same time. Now, we all know that some of the key impediments for running advanced bioinformatics courses, especially in Africa, but also in any country or any continent, include differences in computational environments. Oftentimes, there are very complicated software stacks, numerous dependencies, and versions of bioinformatics tools. And it makes it very difficult to have um, analyses be run at multiple locations at the same time because of this. Now, the development of containerized workflows has previously been undertaken by HCA Bionet, not only by HCA Bionet, but many other training providers as well to overcome some of these challenges. But the use of containers means uh, that potential hosting classrooms then need to meet a much higher minimum spec. And I've actually listed some of what we asked for in our application form on the slide, because we did determine that a containerized approach was actually the best approach uh, for our purposes. But because we were running the course for the first time, it was quite difficult to estimate or guesstimate some of the specs that we were going to ask for. Um, so our technical team played it safe and they asked for everything that they thought would be required to successfully deliver the course. And they were quite a lot. Um, I'm not going to talk to them in depth here uh, because we are running out of time. But then sites interested in hosting the course then had to embark on the mammoth task of locally managing the infrastructure, which was quite a task indeed. 
So the microbiome analysis tools that we used within the course were all packaged within singularity containers, of course, to enable the deployment of a standard replicable software stack across different hosting sites, and also to remove the overhead of installing individual tools, versions, and libraries. Now, to facilitate the reproducibility of the analysis for the various practicals and assignments, workflows using Nextflow was, were also actually created. Then, to further complicate things, a separate container was created for downstream analysis of results using RStudio. And then participants were then required to interactively log into a compute node to execute the R container and run the analysis. So quite, quite, quite advanced stuff, actually. So we had quite a number of differences uh, with the training model with this course, of course, with the addition of all these infrastructural requirements. But I am happy to report that the pilot of the HAA Bionet 16S RRNA Microbiome Intermediate Bioinformatics training course ran successfully in 2019. And we actually had a whopping 21 classrooms um, actually registered to host the course and they were spread across about 13 African countries. We also had 292 participants formally enrolled to take the course and we also had one a small remote group taking the course um, which were managed by the core team. So we also had roughly 105 support staff who volunteered their time across the 21 sites and this um, or these included 20 systems administrators who provided on-site support throughout the course. Um, I just wanted to make a quick note to say that the pulling, running and testing of the containers, software and the analysis on the various clusters by hosting classrooms were done with systems administrators first and then with participants before the start of the course to ensure that once the course commenced, everybody was actually comfortable with the environment, logging into the comp compute nodes, um, executing tasks um, and so forth. So, so we, we put a lot of pre-work and leg work into making sure that everyone was comfortable with the, with the environment. So it's great for me to be able to say that 146 of the enrolled participants actually passed the course and met the criteria to pass the course. And of course, there were a number of challenges, which I don't have a lot of time to speak to here. Um, but I must say that local staff really mitigated a lot of the challenges. They dealt with a lot of things locally and very little um, then were brought to the core team. To deal with apart from in the beginning when you know people were getting set up and everybody's getting comfortable with the environment and and the model so with that said i would like to say that the model worked well and ran well across many of the sites uh, but the key success of the pilot year is actually that it provides a model for delivering topic specific bioinformatics courses across the african continent which overcomes some of the barriers caused by unequal infrastructures geographical distance and access to expertise so we are very excited about how well this ran and i just wanted to say a quick thank you to all of the people and organizations who helped make the course such an awesome success. So thank you everybody for listening to this talk and I look forward to some of the questions and discussions coming out of it.